Hello everyone and welcome back to our TV Women's Podcast. This is episode 149. Um, I had a panic that it was episode 150 when I was doing the agenda and I was like, oh my god, we need to be doing more for episode 150, like we should have had this thing planned and now it's like, it's next week, you're on holiday. Yeah, you're not even here for it. I say, like, oh, I had like a proper panic about it, but it's not. It's episode 149. Um, it just means next week we'll be in the same position again. Yeah. Sound. We'll do something for the 150 second. Yeah, there we go. Wow. I've got I've got good guests, nice guests for next week though. Yeah. Um, so we can, we can celebrate one fifty with them, and we'll just add a picture of you in the corner or something. Amazing, you can amazing. Be there, be there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it is currently Wednesday. Um, apologies that there was no um, post match from Sunday. Busy, busy gals. Obviously, the Liverpool Man City game was on. It was quite the day. It was out all day. I was all, I wasn't me. I wasn't able to watch. Yeah. So, but we're going to talk about it now. We're going to digest that Liverpool won two 0 away at Coventry. A massive win. Really, really important win. I think as well. Um, obviously, put us third in the table. Level one points with Sheffield United just behind Durham. Um, so puts us in a good position. Um, for the season so far. Obviously, Leanne Keenan got the double um, her first two goals for Liverpool um, this season. Um, I think, I think, I think she's been needing that. I think, especially watching her last, like the last two games that she's played in, I feel like she's been very like just so close to getting the goals, but hasn't quite got it. Um, like we yeah. we both highlighted against Crystal Palace. I think it was that she was. Um, she was like really keen. She obviously had a few times where she was almost like one on one with the keeper, um, a couple of opportunities. So she was just always like so close yet so far from getting getting those goals. But she gets two at the weekend, so it must it must be like a proper weight off your shoulders as like a new player and a new team finally getting like your first first goals for the club, mustn't it? It must be like as you said. Over the last couple of games, like you've really noticed the fact that she's she has been so close every time and had multiple chances within a game to put to put it in the back of the net and to, to now get two two in in a game, um, is great and you kind of hope that that's the ammunition that she needs to sort of like let the floodgates open and really push on, um, and and get a tally up for this season because ultimately we need to look to someone now for those goals. I mean, we thought Rihanna Dean was going to be that person. Yeah. Um. Obviously, she she got knocked back with an injury, so not been in, in the the squad for a few a couple of games now. But like, it, it's so important to just have the outlet up, up front. And I mean, although she's not necessarily been scoring the goals, um, she's been creating the chances uh, week yeah. in week out, and she's just absolutely full of energy. So I'm delighted that she's been able to score two goals. Um, got to there, didn't get to see it. But um, uh, it was yeah, it was a great header as well. Great cross from Fernie, and obviously, Robe getting on the on the assist sheet as well, which doesn't happen too often. So I think it was an all round solid solid performance from from the team in general, really. Yeah, well, it was kind of like an instant impact type thing with Rachel Fairness, um, because I was doing like a couple of Twitter updates and stuff, and I was like, oh, Fernie's come on, like, will she be the difference? And she's obviously set up Kenan for the goal, and it's a lovely cross. But it's kind of like, I think I the last game that we went to at home, as uh, as turned to you and and Emma, I think was there, yeah. And I was just like, it's the eighty fourth minute, and Rachel Rachel Fern, I'm yet to see Rachel Fairness on the pitch. Like I was like, I'm more happy about it. And obviously, it was yeah. like highlighted um, afterwards. It was like, oh well, we've got you know more squad depth this season and stuff. And you know, is it managing minutes? Is it something different? Is it just the team you play in, you you play whatever team you think's best. But it's like it, it's Rachel Fairness. Like she's she's probably one of the best players in the squad. Yeah, one of the best players in the squad. She's she's the one that can flip the game and can make an impact. So and you know 
she must be buzzing someone off the bench on, on Sunday and making that instant impact with the cross for her because it's kind of like, play me next time, do you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. get these opportunities, like, play me. But then it's also like, well, the team's done so well so far as well. And it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So yeah. it's kind of like, you, you don't, I, I don't really know how, what way to go about it because it's like, I want Fanny to start every game. Like, absolutely love her. But then on the other hand, I'm like, but stick to what we've had so far because that is doing well. I don't know if you're kind of in the same wavelength. Um, I think it's hard. I think from just watching like the few games that there's been so far this season, I don't. I sometimes feel like it doesn't work when we have both Fernie and Bo Kearns on the pitch because they kind of occupy the, the the same area. Um, so I think it's just picking the games for each player. And playing to their strengths. For example, Fernie, you might put on um, to go up against a team that's relatively small because of the impact she has when she's um, with her, like her aerial impact. Sorry. Yeah. So I think it's you pick your games for your players. Like we have, a, we've probably got the biggest squad that we've had in quite a few, quite a few years in terms of depth. So it's it's kind of strange for us to be saying like, oh my god, who do we choose? Because most of the time it was just the same people week in week out because we didn't have the same eleven couldn't you for each game. Yeah. You or you'd be like very much close to getting it spot on. Um because you wouldn't see that much rotation in terms of a lot of different positions. It would either be an overhaul or like it would be just a couple of few a couple of changes in and there. But we just didn't have the squad depth but now we do. Um, so yeah, you pick and choose your games. Like when we spoke to Matt Beard after the Palace game at home a couple of weeks ago, he was like, "I've still got the ability to try out one of these different formations, try out players in different areas. Like I'm still getting to know the squad, picking my strongest." And I said to him, "Like, well, like what sort of what is your strongest?" And he says, "It completely depends on the opponent that we're coming up against. Like, for example, the, the fact that you played a back three and two wing backs on against Palace, like." that suited Palace's style, but that might not have suited our Coventry or that might not have suited when we come up against WSL teams in the Cups, like, you know what I mean? So it's very much, I think, selection is dependent on the formation and the team that they're coming up against. But yeah. I was the same as you. I wish Fernie would play every single game. I just think she has that impact, which is above what anyone else has in the team. Yeah. Um, and I think she probably does feel a little bit hard done by the fact that she scored so many goals for Ireland over the international break and then coming back and not getting into the team, whether that's a minutes thing or not, and then getting subbed on again. So you probably would feel a little bit hard done by because you're not too sure what much else she can do. She could probably start maybe score a few or assist a few more goals, but like she's actually impacting the game when she does come on. Um, so you can understand why she'd feel a little bit aggrieved by it, but... You know, we've, as I said, we've got a big squad and you need to utilise your squad when you think it best suits them. Yeah, definitely. I think I, I, I want to highlight as well just, like, another clean sheet. Uh, yeah. So I'm just looking now. So from, from like, the beginning of the season, um, it's, our, it's, our, it's only our second clean sheet of the season. Mm-hmm. But we have, we've, we've conceded um, three, uh, four, sorry, um, so it's not too bad going into um, like a couple of games of the season. Two clean sheets, four goals, four five goals conceded overall. So it's not too bad. We we obviously highlighted um, Jasmine Matthews and Leanne Rubin last week's podcast and just how crucial they've been over the last few weeks and how their form has really changed. But I think as well, like there's been a mismatch in keepers for all the games. Yeah. Law started, then Foster stopped, then Law started again, and Law started again because Foster was injured at the weekend. So it's like very rotational with the goalkeeper, and it was towards the back end of last season as well. Um, but then on the other hand, that just also proves the the depth we have in goalkeepers now. Like we didn't have that yeah. at one stage of last season, so it's kind of like you you kind of just sort of pointing out the the positives of it all I think at this point rather than being like oh what's going on with with you know Laws and Foster like are they going to have to battle it out all season you kind of focus on the more positive side of it which I think is important because I, 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 I don't know if you feel the same but I've got a really good like vibe from this team at the minute like I feel yeah. I feel a lot more comfortable that, than I have done for a while and how 
how we're playing like at this stage of last season I was like oh we haven't won every game like we're not in a good position like it's going to be really tough where it's like well we're sitting third level with Sheffield only a couple of points off done and it's like you're in a good position going, yeah, into, think- going into the weekend's fixture against Sheffield do you know what I mean yeah I think everything everything helps and looks a bit more rosy when you're winning yeah um, we, we know more than anyone that can change very quickly <laughs> yeah. but um, it's nice like as it is and how, how it's sort of going at the minute um I do agree they just feel like a little bit of a shift um without sort of touch wood trying to jinx it too much um but yeah it's just yeah it's um I just hope it, it continues you know what I mean like there's so much riding on this season and we, I feel like I say it every single podcast like it's probably the biggest season we've got or we've had so far to try to try and um, really get back into the WSL and yeah. hopefully like we've shook off like the the, the cobwebs really starting the season obviously that that loss to London City wasn't necessarily the way we wanted the season to begin but I think we've picked ourselves up since then um, and have like pushed on and um hopefully that that sort of continues throughout the season I think we have the squad to do it um, and we have the players to do it it's just get, hitting a bit of form and, and maintaining that form throughout you know what make it make it difficult for teams to come and play at Prenton Park yeah um, make them fear coming to the ground and make them fear playing against us I think that's what we need to do I think sometimes teams just come and obviously everyone seems to elevate their game, their game against us anyways but we want them to play with fear make those mistakes make us capitalize on those mistakes which I they don't think we've tapped into yet but hopefully over time if we build up a bit of a record of winning at home say five games on the bounce we've not lost at home that builds up that fear for the other teams that are coming to play against us and puts a bit more pressure on them to break that yeah. um so I think that's sort of what like the next step would be to just like push on throughout the season um well that's what I'd, I'd I'd like to see anyways yeah definitely yeah I agree with that um we'll, we'll move on topics for, for a minute we'll go back to the pool in a second but um big news that was was mentioned was that Farrell Williams um has been inducted into the Hall of Fame um it's to mark the 10 year anniversary of the women's super league which is mad I can't believe it's like 10, like ten, years. 10 years of, of the women's super Great. league um, but yeah, she's the first player to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, I I don't think you could pick a more deserving player than Farrell Williams no. f- for that honour. Um, she's obviously you know record holder for most appearances for England with 172. Um, she's you know obviously been at Everton, she's been at Liverpool, um, Arsenal, Reading. Like she's been involved in in so many good teams for the for the women's Super League over the seasons and. Yeah, I just think, you know, she took part in every single one of those seasons as well those, across those 10 years for the Women's Super League. So it's kind of just like she is the perfect fit for that honour, really, isn't she? She really is. Like, when you look at her accolades and, like, what she's achieved since she's been involved in the sport and just how much people look up to her as a, as a role model and, and as as a figure of, of women's football, like, it's incredible. I mean, a stat that, that's here is she's taken part in every single season of the WSL that has been before she retired last season. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Ten years, like every single season. And obviously winning winning two titles within that as well. Yeah. With it's just unbelievable. With us, hey! That's how claim to fame that, isn't it? Um, I think, yeah, she's a phenomenal player. I'm, and I'm, I feel like we're all really blessed to be able to have witnessed at least a part of her a part of her career um it's sad that she's not involved like no longer involved but I think she's left a, a big enough legacy to never be forgotten in that sort of sense yeah and I think like you look at how how early now you have players starting to get involved in the women's game like you look at the likes of George Stanway Lauren Hemp Ella Toon all around the like 20 21 22 range like they're starting their careers so early and they have the potential to be like Farrah Williams in terms of having that stretch of a 10-year legacy even further, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Beating the appearance record, winning more titles. So she's really such a figurehead to look up to and for girls to work towards her achievements as well as just the the technical player that she was on the pitch as well. Um, it's such a, a phenomenal achievement, really, like all she's done. And it's not only like... Um, like 
young girls now who will see her as like a, a real role model. It's like you just mentioned earlier, Georgia Stanway, Lauren Hemp. Like they would have looked up to her because they would have been like what, like 10, 11 when the WSL was starting and like yeah. Williams was was involved and stuff. So it's like it's like she's not only molded like she's not only molding like future generations, but she's molded like the current generation of the WSL as well, which I think yeah. is like very really important to highlight. So it's not just She's literally like the past, present, and future of what women's football is 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 in England at the minute, which I think is like really cool if you if you think about it, um, because it's just like a it's just like a lasting legacy, basically, isn't she? Um, yeah. But yeah, it says here ahead of the current season, Williams' record of 147 appearances in the league was fifth overall, while she was fourth on the all-time list for assists with 28. And second for the number of chances created, which is two hundred and sixty-six. So someone's had to count all them. I know. Fair play. That's crazy. Fair play to the staff. <laughs> yeah. That's Honestly. that's intense. Yeah. But they the, have to count every time she creates a chance. That's ridiculous. Well, what you count as a chance? Good. What counts as a chance? Do you know what I mean? So that's very subjective. Like ever, I think everyone has a different opinion of what counts as a chance. Yeah, there must be some sort of written definition somewhere. Obviously, like shots on target as well is like counts as a chance. Like, oh, I don't know, it's hard that one. Like created, you could have done like a missed, a missed, a miss hit, and it creates something. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not sure. But it's all a bit really awkward back pass counts as a chance. Yeah, or like it just comes off like your side or something. Yeah. It literally like hits your shoulder and like bounces over someone. It's like, is that a chance? It's out there. Is that what you call them? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? But yeah. there's, there's um there's three more players to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, think, um Rachel right. Yankee got in got inducted this afternoon. She did, and then I think so. She counts as the three from when we when I wrote this. So there's right. two more that are going to be announced tomorrow. He counts as the three. He's the other one. No, I mean, she counts as, like, the three that were to be announced. Right, got you. So t- there should be two more tomorrow. Um, okay. Which exciting. Is, it's got, really got me thinking. It's like, who's it going to be? Um, I, I'm going to guess. I feel like you're going to guess the same person I'm going to guess. Um... Either Hope Powell mm. or Emma Hayes. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm just going random. <laughs> I feel like I'm second guessing my guess. Oh, no, who are you going to go for? I think Kelly Smith also could be another option. Man. Yeah. So Kelly okay. Smith is mine. I feel like she is the obvious choice along yeah. I feel like there's Farrah Williams, Rachel Yankee, Kelly Smith. Yeah, like. Mm. Really? Hope Powell, though, the ex-England manager, I Hope reckon Powell, that would be a Powell, shout. really good shout, to be fair. I didn't yeah. think about that. I, didn't think I don't know. That. I, I, just, I was just assuming players. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the criteria is, to be honest. Surely there'll be a manager thrown in there. It's like a Hall of Fame, isn't it? So it's not just going to be... Do you reckon it can be, like, current, current people as well? I don't know. I don't know whether it's, like, past... Past. I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and find out. I know. Well, well, the we'll future us will know by when this podcast goes out. So, like, we'll actually already know. That was, that was all of it. I didn't know how my brain was working. Like, then. Don't know now, but like this, like we will this is when people are watching this tomorrow. Like, we'll know, which is weird. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Farrah Williams, well done, girl. Well done, Ashley. Ashley. Round of applause, Farrah Williams. Nice. Well done. Um, back to Liverpool then. We obviously mentioned that the we face Sheffield United um, at Bramall Lane. Yeah, on a huge game. Absolutely huge for the season. Um, obviously, like I said, at Bramall Lane there, there are still a few tickets left. So if you fancy going and want to go, like, please go and get those tickets because they're literally, they're literally a pound. Like, it is a pound. Um. So, like, if you can go, go. Take, take the family. Take your dog. Take your nan. Take everyone. Just let's get like a really good crowd because take yourself. <laughs> take yourself. Um. Yeah. Take Lauren. She's going. I'm going. So you can see me. Um. 
but yeah, um, please go because you know, the better the atmosphere, the better the game, basically. I know, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always a. I, f- I feel like it's always a really intense game between Liverpool and Sheffield United, especially since like the last two seasons. Like they've been quite intense really? fixtures, um, like really exciting fixtures. I think though, because that's what you want. You want you want your kind of edgy seats moments in these games, um, because that's what makes it entertaining, basically. Um, and we'll obviously see some former Liverpool players there as well. Obviously, Courtney Trippin Kirk's there, Frank Kitchen, Jess Clark, obviously, obviously signed for them this summer. Sophie Bradley Auckland's there now. So it's like quite a, a good, you know, nice mix. You know what? I've, I don't know why. I feel like ever since like those players left, and obviously Neil Redfern is the manager who used to be our manager and left after one game and we got beat, however many, by Arsenal. Five mil. Been like, Thank you. I feel like pride is on the line because these players have gone and it's like instant ex manager. I feel like you need, like, everyone wants to win this game because there's so much in it. Like, I want nothing more than to beat them. Like, I don't, not as like individual people, just because they've left, like, yeah. to beat them. It's kind of like a haha, we beat you. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, fingers crossed. Uh, I, do, I, do, I do get what you mean because it's kind of like a. It's kind of like where like the grass isn't always greener type thing. Yes, uh, exactly. And like, like huh, get that or take that. Yeah. Or and like that's not us being like a horrible like it genuinely yeah. is like a. It's a pride thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think like the position we're in at the minute, obviously in the league, like we are level on points with them. So, just in terms of just that in itself makes it a huge game because it's like, well, who's going to get the edge on on the on each other? who's going to put Durham under pressure because it's like you need to start doing that because I'm sick of every every game last season it was like Durham won Durham won even though we won Durham won and it's like oh. and then I also the last game I was in way. and so this season it's like the last couple of games it's Andy Kelly every time you see him when he's coming down the stairs to go and take you down to the media he's like Durham won it's like Andy oh. stop stop killing the bar like we've just won like we've just played a really good game and you're saying Durham's won that's like you're not gonna stand I really, with them. I really dislike Durham I'm gonna be I'm gonna say it now you know. I just they yeah. just have some sort of Professor McGonagall spell over us like they just well, batter us and I don't know why and I'm really really not looking forward to playing them I'm gonna say they now. play they play Sunderland um, in, the early, in the early fixture, the twelve o'clock fixture on Sat on Saturday, I think it is. Um, so like we'll obviously know going into our game, and Sunderland have been have done well this season, so I think it'll be a tough it'll be a tough fixture. It's it, it Durham and away as well, so it'll be nice. It I say it'll be nice for us, but it can't. It might add that little bit extra edge as well because if Durham get beat, they're only two points ahead. Whoever wins between us and Sheffield go top of the table. Oh, it's stop it, Lauren. Stop it. It adds, it adds to it. It kind of like makes it like it's just it, oh, it's a yeah. huge it's just a huge game and it's like You know what, like that's the first time you just said that then I thought of the prospect of being promoted. Oh god. Like can you imagine? The banners, the merch, the trophy. Oh. I think I'd honestly cry. I, no, me and you were bawling at the last game of the season if we get promoted. I think I would cry. I, I think we should do like, a pitching bit. What, like, just imagine the emotions that you feel, like, all the, all the stress, all the oh stress God. that we've been through for, like, two seasons, yeah. three seasons, really, because the seat last season at WSL was stressful, and it's like... Oh, it, God. It's, such a, it's just a weight off your shoulders, I feel like. It'd be so... Be so nice. I mean, let's but, yeah, it's very, it's very early, very early on. Let's just take one game at a time. Focus on Sheffield this weekend. Beat them. Potentially go top, or then go go second, which is fine. I'm happy to go second going into international break. Like that is cool with me. Um, but yeah, oh. I'm gonna think about that the whole time now. Now that like I've figured it out and I've mentioned it, and I was like, oh my god, that's gonna be playing. Really, let's let's not talk about it because that's making me feel a bit sick. Yeah, I think that's a good place to end the podcast. That gives that gives people a lot to think about. Uh, if it's a good place to end. Um. So yeah, I enjoyed that. That was a nice little chat. Um, yeah, thank you. A little pod that. Um. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Um. Remember to like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel. 
check out um, the last couple of videos that we've posted there um, and we will see you well I will see you on Saturday after the game for some post-match reactions not sure when Amy will see you not next week week after yeah sounds about right well uh, but yeah thanks for watching um, see you later bye bye